Okay, now, hi everyone. Today we will be solving question number 4 from exercise 1.3 that is regarding arithmetic progressions. The question goes like this. How many terms of the given AB that is 9, 17, 25, so on, are required to make a complete sum of 636? So, I have rewritten the question as uh, how much we require, only that much I have written here. 9 plus 17 plus 25, so on, is equal to 636. We do not know the last term. I want you to concentrate on this. We do not know the nth term or the last term. It is not known. So, these are A1, A2, A3. However, AN is unknown. So, what is this? This is nothing but sum of the first n terms. 636 is taken as SN. So, what all things do we know from here? We know the first term. The first term is nothing but A1, which is equal to 9. And we can, of course, find out difference, common difference D, by A2 minus A1. By using the formula A2 minus A1, we will substitute the values. A2 being 17 minus A1 being 9. Always don't forget to use brackets so that whenever negative values come, this it plays a very important, very very important role. Now, 17 minus 9, which is 8. So difference is 8. We get A and G. We also have the value of S N. By using the formula of S N is equal to N upon 2 into 2A plus N minus 1 into D, we can find out N value. We will land up with a uh, um, quadratic equation which we will have to factorize later. We are most probably going to get two values of n of which we have to select the most appropriate one. This will be our course of action. Let us start. So, continuing with the SN formula, we know it is n upon 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into b. Substituting the values, SN value is 636, 636 is equal to N upon 2, N remains N because we don't know the value of N into 2 into A which is 9 plus N minus 1 into D which is 8. For the substitution, divided by 2 when it comes to the other side that is called as transposition. By transposition it becomes multiplied by 2. So it is 636 into 2 which is equal to n into 2 nines of 18 plus 8 by right distributive property becomes 8 into n, 8n minus 1 into 8 becomes minus 8. Multiplying 636 into 2, 2 6 the 12, 2 3 the 6 plus 1 7, 2 6 the 12. It is 1272 is equal to n into 18 minus 8 is 10 plus 8n. Again, this time it is left distributive property. By applying left distributive property, we get 1272 is equal to 10n plus 8n square. Taking the constant term to the opposite side, it becomes 0 is equal to. We will arrange it in a quadratic equation always highest order to lowest order. The highest degree of the variable will be used first. So, I am using 8n square first plus 10n. Signature sign of 1272 will change, it will become minus 1272. So, we get a quadratic equation. So, now it is time to solve for the quadratic equation 8n square plus 10n minus 1272. We can make it a little more simpler by taking out a common factor out of this. This 2 is a common factor in all of this. We can take 2 outside and it becomes 4n square plus 5n minus 636 which is equal to 0. 2 multiplied by 2 when it goes to the other side we take it as 0 upon 2. 0 divided by anything is 0. So we can neglect the 2. 2 goes to the other side becomes 0 by 2 so it is 0. Now let us factorize this given equation. For factorizing the given equation if we multiply the first and the last coefficient the coefficient with the constant we get minus 4, 6 are 24, 2 carry, 4 is a 12 plus 2, 
over 4. So, we get a, a product of minus 2544 and the middle term being plus 5. So, we need two factors such that the multiplication should be 2544 and the addition should be plus 5. Their sum should be plus 5. So, such numbers when we factorize and say, when we factorize, we find that now this you will have to do on your own, factorization you will have to try. We will get 53 as a prime number on one side and 48 as other number. So, which one should be positive, which one should be negative? Since the product is negative, one of them must be negative, one should be positive. The bigger number sign will be given to the sum. The sum is positive, means the bigger number should be plus. So, 53 remains positive and 48 becomes negative. So, we will use these two factors and split the center term. So, it becomes 4n square plus 53n minus, sorry, 53n minus 48n minus 636 which is equal to 0. Further, taking out common from this, 4n square plus 53n and when the coefficient is nothing common, n square and n there is n common outside, then remaining is 4n plus 53. Similarly, like these two, since minus is common, I can take out minus common outside. And here, if you observe, you will get 12 common outside. 12 is a common factor in both, so 12 goes outside, automatically we get 4n plus 53. Since minus is already taken out from both, we do not get any negatives inside is equal to 0. Now, we see that 4n plus 53 is a common factor in both the terms. We take that out. So, we get 4n plus 53 into n minus 12 is equal to 0. Since 4n is 4 plus 53 goes out from the first one, we get n remaining in the first place. And after minus, 4n plus 53 is gone out. So, minus 12 is at the next place. So, we have n minus 12. Now, product of two numbers is 0 means either the first one should be 0 or the second should be 0 or both of them can be 0. But if none of them are 0, you will not get the product as 0. Means either first one which is 4n plus 53 must be 0. If 4n plus 53 is 0, let us continue the discussion from here. I will take these two factors and then continue. So, we will now look at the two factors separately, their possibilities being first one 0 or second one 0. If we take first one as 0, then 4n is equal to plus 53 becomes minus 53 and n is equal to minus 53 by 4. This cannot be possible because of two reasons. See, n value has to be always natural number and minus 53 by 4 is negative as well as a fraction. For both reasons, this cannot be our acceptable value. Let us test on the other side. n minus 12 if it is 0, then n is equal to 12, which is a natural number. So, the only possible answer is n is equal to 12. So, we can say safely that 12 terms, the first 12 terms, when added, will give the answer of 636. They have asked how many terms. So, the number of terms required is equal to 12. Thank you.